A Reflection on Life by Kaz Pinder. So we're all living this funny old thing called life. You might be wondering what life is or what your life is all about. Well, let me tell you, there have been books published, lots of songs written and many films made about what life is. It is probably the most philosophical question to be asked by humans. It is also likely that there is no greater pursuit in life than to find out what the meaning of life is. For some people, the answer is crucial to who they are and why they are here. Most people perhaps believe they will never find out the true meaning of life. We all have different ideas of what life is. For some, it's happiness, fulfilment and flourishing. For others, it's finding love, having a family and building solid relationships. Then there are those who wish to earn lots of money, have a good time, become rich and have plenty of material possessions. Then there are those who wish to work in the community, care for others, serve others. And then there's those whose belief is that it's power and knowledge which brings about the understanding and wisdom of what life is. Living life from these perspectives is all well and good. We can all live life to the full. But I don't think we take a minute and actually stop to take on board what our lives are really like and how important it is to have God in our life, to live the life Christ died for us all to have. Tom Wright asks us to imagine life being like a mist on an autumn day. We've all seen those mists floating around. You see it out of the window, just hanging round the valley above the stream. It is just beautiful, evocative and mysterious, just like we human beings can be. Then the sun rises and the mist is gone. This is what our lives are really like. We really have no idea what life will bring today, let alone what it's going to bring tomorrow. Therefore, we have to live each day as a gift from God. We ask what life is. They say it's from B to D, from birth to death. But what is in between B and D? It is C. And C is our choice. We have a choice to choose the kind of life we lead. To choose the greatest gift ever given to us by God. Verse 16 of chapter 3 of St John's Gospel makes it clear what this gift is. For God so loved the world he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. God gives us his son. Wow. Awesome. The Bible shows us a God who loves his people, a God who forgives, a God who can give eternal life. God's plan and his gospel begin with the creation right through to the birth of Jesus Christ and then on from there. God sent us his only son who is followed, loved, persecuted and ridiculed and then And then he's hung on a cross to die, to die for our sins so that we would be set free, so that we would be forgiven. But more importantly, to bring us to God, to live an eternal life. It is important to live life to the full. But let's not make the mistake of living a life that is full of purpose, pursuit, fulfilment and satisfaction if it has not got God in it. We've already seen that life can be like a mist, here one minute and gone the next. In fact, St Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18, the things that are seen are transient but the things that are unseen are eternal. Therefore, don't live life for the things you can see. Live it for the unseen. Live it for God. We often say we will do it tomorrow, but tomorrow never comes because when it does, it is today. 
We, we have to choose and trust Jesus now. For tomorrow never comes. It is never too late to repent and follow Jesus. Look at Dismas, the penitent thief, the courage it must have taken for him to speak up at the last minute from his criminal cross. But Jesus rewards him with eternal life. We're going to hear a story now about a gentleman called Sir Francis Newport. He was the Earl of Bradford and the head of an English atheist club. He's on his deathbed and he can hear people telling him that he can be saved. And he speaks these words. You need not tell me there is no God, for I know there is one and that I am in his angry presence. You need not tell me there is no hell, because I feel myself already slipping. Wretches, seize your idle talk about there being hope for me. I know I am lost forever. All that fire, all the insufferable pangs of hell, all that I could lie for a thousand years upon the fire that is never quenched to purchase the favour of God and be united to him again. But this, this is a fruitless wish. Millions and millions of years will bring me no nearer the end of my torments than one poor hour. O oh, eternity, eternity, for ever and ever, all oh, the insufferable pangs of hell. Newport, in the end, has had to admit that the fulfilled life he had led for all to see is not all there is. There is an unseen which, when loved and trusted, brings eternal life. Newport is crying out to God to be saved. I don't think he went to hell. I believe he found eternal life as he cried out to God. God saved him. Friends, Jesus can and always will surpass all that we can do in our life. Whether it's striving to live a holy life, striving to serve him in ministry, doing service for others or simply taking care of our own families. With Jesus in our life, we can do so much more. If we need a miracle from the Lord, we need to call on him. We will need to invite him into our life. We can't expect him to make a miracle that we will notice if we won't even give him room in our life. God is our treasure and God is our end. Therefore, we must continue to nurture and enable people to grow in their faith and life. Our evangelistic message and the message of the gospel must point people to the living life of the resurrected Jesus Christ who is here with us now and is loving us. Surely this is the moment when the Lord himself is moving us forward, nudging us on. St Paul reminds us so beautifully, we are God's work of art created in Christ Jesus to live the good life as from the beginning he had meant us to live it. So this Lent, I ask, what are you doing with your life? Amen.